Hey Bass Geek here and today I'm going to show you some modifications that are going to help you catch fish on a soft jerk bait. All right, as you can see, man, the leaves are starting to change. Look at them over there, they're starting to fall. It is getting closer and closer to the time of year when these bass love to come up and hit that top water. Now, one of my favorite things to throw to follow up a top water bait or to just use by itself this time of year is some sort of fluke, some sort of soft plastic jerk bait. A soft plastic jerk bait can be used in a ton of different ways, and I'm about to show you some of my favorites right now. Of course, you've got to have the Zoom Super Fluke. I like the Fluke a little bit better, just a regular old Fluke, but the Super Fluke will work a little bit bigger bait. This is from 304 Lures. I don't remember what it is, but it's a really kick butt uh, soft jerk bait, and it's because of the tail. I'll show you why in a minute. And then, of course, as always, because nobody makes this in this color, which is a Goshad. Very translucent bait, great for uh, clear water. A four and a five inch. I like the four inch as we get into the fall. What I also like about this, and you guys see me fish it a lot, is that this one is really heavily salt impregnated. It's heavier than the other two, so I like to fish it deeper so now let's talk about the different ways i rig them this time of year and then i'll show you the different retrieves so each one of these is a little bit different and i want to talk to you about the differences in the baits first number one when we talk about the super fluke we can see it's got a nose that's generally pointed downward it's got a nice flat back and a good girthy belly kind of built like me you know the nose down belly out you know what i'm saying but the flat back is super key in how i like to fish it the 304 lures it's kind of a hybrid between both of them so a little more rounded body still got that girthy belly good durable bait good solid nose but the nose is straight here's something i love about it i don't know if you can see it but it's got a cup on the tail and that really gives it some tail action when you stop it that gives it a little bit more erratic motion when you're jerking it so this little heavier than the fluke but you can do a lot of the same things kind of in between between the fluke and this bait this is my strike king caffeine shack this bait is a really heavy bait really heavy bait it's got a lot of salt in it it's going to fall very quickly that's what i like and when i like to use this bait when i'm fishing these highlands reservoirs deep steep banks and they're generally clear this little color right here the ghost shad it kills in clear water and you can fish it deeper so let's talk about rigging guys again i'll put all this stuff down in the description below you can see exactly which hooks you can see exactly what line rod reel the whole nine yards all you got to do is click on the link that says each now it does help support the channel through tackle warehouse i've partnered with tackle warehouse so if you go out and you you know even if you're just going to buy anything please use my links it don't cost you a single dime extra it just helps donate to the channel so uh i don't have a little gas money to come film this so here's the first thing guys the first way i rig these now this is a five inch you can see it's a little bit longer but generally i'm going to put this on i think this is a gamakatsu hook uh and i think it is a four alt so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to screw it right into the middle of the nose right there i'm not going to show you that but the very next thing is it's like i always say just line it up Put your thumb back there, poke you a hole in, make you a hole, and then you can just slide through once you're done, and you just come straight through the back. Now, if I'm fishing this in open water, which most of the time I am, I'm just going to leave it exposed like that. But if I'm going to say I'm skipping it 
or, or tossing it up around docks or deeper docks or deeper laydowns. I'm going to want to do it a little bit different. I'm going to bring it up at sort of that angle. So I'm going to put my thumb right there. I'm going to come through. And that's where I'm going to start that, that skin hook. And I'm going to get it nice and straight. And then that way I can just barely feel the hook right there. And that's going to keep me pretty weedless. You can also bring it straight through like I showed you before. And just skin hook it and you're good to go. Rigging it weightless. One of the keys that you need to know is the direction that you come through. So if you want the bait to rise in the water, you're going to want to come through just the top portion of the nose. If you want it to sink or dive down, come through at a lower angle, okay? Kind of stay pretty leveled off, dead center. One of the ways I like to have a fluke do is pop up. So I'm just going to push it through. I'm going to come out right there. I like to have the line and the knot covered just like that. Then I can go ahead and do the same exact thing. Mark where it's coming out. This is a four out. You easily go with a three out. You can see how it lays there perfectly and you can just skin hook it if you want to. Now a lot of times I'm just going to leave that exposed and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Now if I'm throwing this around cover, absolutely make sure you to expose that. But you can see how that's going to pull that nose upward. I'll show you some tricks with this rigging in just a second. But that's basically how I'm going to rig any of these, any of these baits, including the 304 lures, weightless. Speaking of this little lure, there's a retrieve that I like a lot when they're busting shad. And so you rig it on a light hook. Like I said, I'd probably go, this is a four out, I'd probably go with a three out. Uh, just a little bit smaller, but this one comes a little farther back. And I'd rig about a two to three foot leader, and I put me a heavy swivel on the front. And there's a reason for that when it comes to the retrieve. I want this swivel to not only keep the line twist out, but I want it to kind of drag the bait down just a little bit. So let's go look at that retrieve, and I'll tell you why it can be so effective around busting bass. When I'm fishing a soft plastic jerk bait, okay, a soft plastic jerk bait, I'm using one of two rods. This is the first. This is my long casting. I want to send it a mile. I want to throw it a mile because they're busting combo, right? This is something I love to use during the summer, and you can see why. I've got that uh, eighth ounce belly weight on there. And I can let it sink a little bit deeper. Use this a lot of different ways in the summer, but I also use it a lot of different ways in September, October, and November, even with the weighted hook to get it down a little bit deeper. This is an old 18 suppressor. It's a seven foot two medium fast action, okay? Great rod, got plenty of backbone, plenty of tip to get this bait, even without the weight out there but i can set the hook on them with these big girthy hooks as you can see now this is probably one of my very favorite spinning reels this is a lose custom pro this i always put my pink braid and i'll put anywhere from 10 to 20 pound test from canine fishing they make the best braid on the market boys and girls i'm not kidding i know i work with them but trust me Use the 10% off code and go get you some braid if you love to fish braid. And I'm telling you, fish their braid. If you do nothing else, fish some of Canine's braid. And then I put, of course, this is the Canine Fluorocarbon Pro 100. And I'm going to throw anywhere from 8 to 12 pound test on this little puppy. Right now, I think I've got 10 on here. Nope, I've got 8. That's why I label those. I'll do a short on that one day. But that is my kind of open water combo. Not going to be throwing that around a lot of heavy cover, even though you can get this into some pretty gnarly stuff. All right, so this is kind of my heavier cover setup. This is a Kistler 
if I can get it to focus here. It's a seven foot light, medium heavy. This thing is incredible. I use it to cast, I mean, everything from flukes to Senkos, weightless, um, floating worms. It's a great floating worm rod. Uh, and you couple this bad boy with this custom pro from Lou's, and I mean, you can cast this thing a country mile weightless worm on a bait caster. It is pretty incredible what this puppy will do. Now, as always, I'm going to put Pro 100. This is something I don't want a lot of stretch to. This rod is pretty soft with pretty good backbone, but I want that low stretch of that fluorocarbon on there. 10 pound test K9 Pro 100, 100% fluorocarbon, baby. K9 always. So the very first retrieve I'm gonna to talk to you about, let's say there's bass busting out here. Again, unfortunately, there's not. But let's say there's bass busting out here and we've got this tied on. You're gonna cast this out and you're just gonna reel it so that it pops and skips across the water like a fleeing bait fish. That's what's great. The swivel's gonna drag it down, but you're gonna Reel it real fast, stop, reel it real fast, and it looks just like a fleeing bait fish coming across the water. Now, if something happens, sometimes, you know, that swivel will be a little too heavy, and it'll drag it down. Just pop it up as you're reeling back in. Give it some pops, and it just tips that surface, looks like a fleeing bait fish, and when those bass are chasing, they can't resist that. So if I'm fishing a deep lay down like this, so I'm gonna text pose this because I'm fishing it back into some cover. Now you can do this, I'm gonna do it with a weighted bait, but the reason why I'm gonna do it with a weighted hook is because it drops off really quickly here. So one of the things I almost always do, I'm gonna skip it right up in there and I'm gonna twitch it upwards because I'm letting it sink down. Now, if you was fishing a shallower area with some, you know, a fluke, something that's gonna you know you're not wanting to dive down and get as deep as this you're actually going to just throw it in there and i always like to skip it kind of let them know and then you can kind of twitch 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 okay it's pretty much that simple but i like to fish it is if i'm fishing deep and I know it's steep. I like to fish it a little more. Drop down, twitch up, twitch up, slight twitches. You can see my rod right there. Sometimes that'll get those fish to come up and just eat it. Let it drop, especially around your main trunk right there. And trust me, when they hit it, when you're doing this, you will know. But that right there is some of my favorite ways to fish a fluke in the fall. So now, let's say you're throwing at schooling bass. They're busting shad and they're missing the fluke. I got another modification I'm gonna show you real quick. Okay, so let's say they're missing this bait or any other, for whatever reason, you're throwing it out around some schoolies and they're missing it. Let me show you a simple way to add a stinger hook. Number one, you get some stinger hooks but you don't use these to pull that off. You be very careful and you place it on a VMC treble spin. You then come through. Now you can put your hook back through and all you do is you take the center and you pin it again probably want to go with a three out this is a four three out's going to come up a little shorter so the hook's more around here maybe even a two but now you've got a nice little blade and a nice little stinger hook when you're really working it fast across the top of the water all right geeks make sure you try some of these out like i said i, I definitely go with a smaller hook i got a four out on here i don't want to cut and retie and waste a bunch of line of course but check out some of these retrieves these are some of my favorite retrieves this time of year i love 
two fish, a saw plastic jerk bait. I love to fish the jerk bait, but that's coming up a little bit later. That right there can be super deadly. But like I said, probably want to go with a little bit shorter hook on there. Maybe even a two off. All of this will be linked in the description. The rods, the line, the reel, everything. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. That's the best way to uh, support the channel, man. Watch the full video from every Sunday and every Wednesday. Watching and commenting and liking really does help. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. Guys, I love to talk fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. And as always, you guys rock.